Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. It's Bortles' it's Jaguars going up against McCown's Jets. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. Coming to you from just off the New Jersey Turnpike in East Rutherford. We are just about set for football on EA Sports from MetLife Stadium. A few moments ago, the crowd here was on their feet as their beloved Jets made their way out of the tunnel. They're ready to go. We're ready to go. And it should be a good one as those New York Jets get set to face off with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And you know, Charles, as Larry pointed out in the open, got a couple of great quarterbacks set to square off here this afternoon. That ball's probably going to be flying all over the place, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. And the game has never been more quarterback-centric than it is now. And both of these teams have top-flight signal callers. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. Two teams more than ready to get this one started. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Josh McCown, the Jets taking the field. Tough go for them in week two out in the Golden State. McCown himself, 166 yards and two touchdowns in that 25-point defeat. And you're just trying to figure out how he can continue to make plays. You know, were those playmakers on offense that can help Josh McCown move this offense forward in any way? Matt Forte at running back, do you throw it to Robbie Anderson out wide? Who's it going to be? Can Jermaine Kearse get integrated into the offense? The Jets need a lot of help and they need it fast. carry for Matt Forte and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. Second down, Forte. Now he'll be dropped at the 30. But a shifty move got him a couple extra on the play. He gets him a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And that is incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. On is the second-year man from Sam Houston State, Lachlan Edwards, to punt it away. Back deep for the Jaguars, Marquise Lee. Pressure comes, and the Jags block it. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. And yeah, they will score. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. Partners, you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars.
And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field. begins with a run by Forte and it worked his way across the 30 to the 32 a solid run on first down gain of seven leaves him with a second and three that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream wasn't it guys picked up all of their assignments created a nice gap for the running back to get through pick up seven yards yeah he's probably chortling on the headset right now saying we got it going boys let's keep it going so second down three yards to go now Looking from the gun, McCown. And Austin Safarian Jenkins has it. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. The first quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. They go play action here on first down. Oh, he nearly picked it. Maybe daylight in front of him if he could have held on. Instead, second down. And we take a look now at the New York offense. The struggles of the New York Jets offense in 2016 were well documented. They struggled to run it, struggled to throw it. A lot of that because of inconsistent quarterback play. A big reason why they ended up 26 overall in offense in the NFL and went from 10 and 6 in 2015 to 5 and 11 in 2016. Forte gets the handoff from McCown. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. As we see Jacksonville starters need to go back to week one to point out Calais Campbell. You know, signed away from the Cardinals in the offseason. Four sacks week one against the Texans. A lot of people actually question him signing with Jacksonville, leaving Arizona because he's a veteran up there in years a little bit. Are you chasing a ring? Is Jacksonville really the place? Well, week one, when he got the four sacks, they had 10 overall against Houston. It sure looked like a genius move. Second week, a little bit tougher. They blocked him a little bit better. Just one sack from the Jacksonville defense against Tennessee. Here we go now. Green. Throwing his McCown on third down. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. On for his second punt, and remember, his first one was blocked. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. And now out come the Jags.
And tough starting field position here. In his own end zone, it's Bortles. Looking for Hearns, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. When you're on your own one-yard line like they were, oftentimes you're thinking just run on any down, get some space there. They elect to throw it. It cost them. You get the sense that they were banking on the element of surprise, right? Everyone expects you to run it there. Let's take a shot. Let's throw it. Try and create some space, some room. And it went awry, didn't it? And here comes the Jags defense as they get back out there. trenches there, didn't they? Here's Chandler Catanzaro for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position, and only one play to score it. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Here comes Blake Bortles now to lead his offense back out there. And it was his interception on the last drive that wound up leading to a game-tying touchdown. And somehow... You can make this a positive, though. You know why? Game tied now. So you're not protecting a lead. So you're not playing that way. You got to go get the lead again. So maybe it loosens him up a little bit and allows him to go ahead and be a little more free in his play. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Muhammad Wilkerson in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. throw on second down over the middle complete that's Cole and he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24 yard line they'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down and that's one of his advantages of a passer is it not with his height setting back there in the pocket firing it over the middle he can really see everything clearly it is and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways all right you don't have to be his height to make a great play 
But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Couple of nice plays for Jacksonville. Another first down there. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. from LSU. It's Leonard Fournette. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. And he'll get across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. Portals now on the option left side. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. in his sixth year in the league on to punt it away. Back deep for the Jets, the AFC leader in return yards in 2015, Jeremy Curley. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head on to the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Start on the ground with Forte. Now this will go for five up to the 33. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Again, they run. Again, it's Forte. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big deal. On third and short to give to the tight end. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Now 
Here comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big-time play and break through the barrier. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. Oh, Fournette loses it. It's out, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And it'll be first and goal at the seven-yard line. Well, that sure started out as a good example of what they call backed up or coming out on offense, meaning you're backed up close to your own goal line. Big-time emphasis on practicing that to try and create some room at no less to give the punter a chance to kick the ball away. It means take care of the ball, try and create some space. They were doing that, and the ball comes free. Here's the Jags' defense now as they head back out there. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. Let's see if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and outs, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here, see if they can force another three and out. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Let's go. Green, three, nine, nine. And here we go on first and goal. They'll try to run with Forte. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. Matt Forte with his second touchdown of this opening quarter. And the Jets have taken the lead. And a pair of rushing touchdowns now for him in the first quarter. And I'm liking what I'm seeing from his big guys up front because they're winning the leverage game. How many times have we talk about low man wins, right? Move the defensive front aside, create those gaps and holes. He's found his way through them for two touchdowns. And after both of those touchdowns, he went right up to that O-line and hit each of them on the helmet. That's he a, recognized That's it. a smart man. You know what else he should do? If this continues, take them all to dinner. And his kick is good. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Now a play fake here on first down. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49.
Fournette, a first down carry. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. I'm ready now for second and nine. Again, it's Fournette. Fournette, first down, still going. And he's brought down. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Bortles on the give to Fournette. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Second down following the run. Here we go now. Three, 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 three. trying the option to the right. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped to the backfield. It's a loss of four. Now third down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's Bortles. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age, but then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right, your mind to beat guys to the football and getting your toes tapped in bounds definitely qualifies as that, doesn't yeah, it? The veteran showing he still has the agility. And that one will be no good. He never had it online. It's well wide to the left. And this score will stay right where it is. And a look here now at Matt Forte. And he's found the end zone twice. And now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now. down this is Forte and there just continues to be nowhere to run he's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage officially no gain on the play and it's second down and as a defensive end getting off the ball quickly swarming to the football making a tackle that's what we saw right there yeah and that's what their job is and really a lot of the time they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance they just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. And going over the middle here to Curley. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. So they'll give a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. And after one, it's the Jets on top early. And we will return to MetLife Stadium after this.
The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Jets in possession as we begin quarter number two here. They'll need to convert a third and seven, though, to start things out. Shotgun here for McCown. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Malik Jackson coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it'll be fourth down. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And now we spotlight the Jets' defense. Yeah, they got to be feeling good about forcing that long missed field goal the last go around. And you know what upsets a kicker more than anything? Is missing a kick they think they can make and feeling like the other side believes that they had something to do with it. And it doesn't matter to those guys on defense. I know. They're taking full credit. Yep, we forced him into the miss, and they're going to ride that confidence the rest of the way. We'll see if the kicker is able to get his confidence back as well. Bortles now on first down. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose. Plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Second down, here's Fournette. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. Here we go now. Blue 45. Blue 45. They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. A big play that time for Jacksonville. 51 yards. That was a nice pickup, some chunk yardage there. Some of those big yards downfield with a little bit of rack thrown in there, a little run after catch, and it came on a crossing route. I can just hear one of my friends who won four Super Bowls as a quarterback always said the same thing. What route does a defense hate? Crossing route. Hate it, hate it, hate it, because it's hard to change direction when they get going full speed in the other way. Play action. It's Bortles. Strong grabs it over the middle. 
And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? They'll give Ford out another crack. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. And this offense on third down today, they've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. offense. Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got it for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play. Ostensibly, the best pass rusher is over you on every snap. I'd be a little jumpy myself. So backed up to the six now, third and goal. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. And Myers able to knock it through. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So a good kick that time, and he's able to redeem himself from the previous miss. And fortunately for him, he got the chance to do that not long after missing the first time. Sometimes a whole game goes by, and you don't get that chance at all. So you keep it with you till the next time you take the field. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out come the Jets. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. On first down, McCown. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended target, the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. That'll bring up second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. The Jets on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 9. From the gun, it's McCown. Found his target. It's Anderson. Take it in for a Jets touchdown. Robbie Anderson, 74 yards. And the Jets find a way to stretch their lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Zero now for the extra point. It's good and it's 21 10. So a 75 yard scoring drive on just three plays, and it's finished off by a New York Jets touchdown. Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Play action. Now it's Bortles. Looking for Hearns, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Buster Screen, and his guys will set up shop at midfield at the 50-yard line. When a team's turned it over three times in the first half, we just look at the offense and say, guys, what are you doing? But instead, we really should be looking at the defense. They've created the takeaways. Two interceptions, one cause fumble. They played awfully well swarming to the ball here in the first half. And the Jets set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the table and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. play now for Forte and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain five yards is the tally on first down that brings up second and five partner I think from our experience together we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you if I'm going to run the football on first down I've got to get at least four yards they got five here they've got to feel pretty good about that one McCown to throw on second down. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack. 
Back at the 47-yard line, Malik Jackson in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. The Jets on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third down and 12. Hurry up, here we go. Here's McCow to throw. Throwing deep for Stewart. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, you get a little confidence in him and let him fling another one. They begin with a run by Fournette, and he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. again with Fournette. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. The Jaguars on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. Here's a carry for a former starter. This is T.J. Yeldon. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. down portals try to lay one up deep it's caught inside the 25 touchdown Jaguars a big play there 60 yards and the Jaguars are back within a score well they had gone run the previous play nice little setup this time they go play action defense bites a bit and they hit for a big play in the end zone. So they sold it really well, didn't they? Because of just what you described, they ran at the previous play, come back with the same action, and now they step back and throw it and get a big play for a touchdown. But what happens as a defensive back is your eyes have to go to the right place. You always hear Coach talk about, are your eyes in the right spot? Well, this time the eyes went to the play action. It froze their feet. They weren't moving. And he went on past him and caught the pass for a touchdown. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown.
Here's Myers now to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Jets' offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Second down, here's McCown. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Jets on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and eight. Throwing now is McCown. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And now running right through it. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. A jet first down, 18 big yards that time. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller said that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. defensive linemen they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen they have excellent hands they can throw people off on a play we just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position The Jets on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This will be third and five. So two minutes to go in a wild first half. We'll come back to MetLife Stadium after this short timeout. A reminder, coming up here at halftime, we'll ship you off to Orlando. Larry Ridley will have first-half highlights and analysis. LR, plenty to show in this one. Going to be a busy man at intermission. So third and five, defensively expecting pass. They've got six DBs out there. From midfield, here's McCown. Pressure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. All right. 
right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And we shift our attention now to Chris Ivory. Now, I'm not going to say you completely abandon the passing game, but it would really behoove them to get this running game going more. That's the identity most teams are seeking. Able to establish themselves, control the game by running it, have to touch it multiple times in order to have success in this yeah, game. And as we say, yeah, that's right. As we say all the time, that sets up the passing game. I feel like a broken record with that. Listen, we could be broken records all we want. Bottom line is, lather up that big horse <laughs> and let him run. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Shotgun now for Bortles. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they got a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Here we go now. now a play fake. Bortles. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And it's a touchdown for the Jets. Second time he's lost a fumble. This one hurts more. It's return for six. He's been under a lot of duress, hasn't he? Pressured, hurried, harassed the whole game. Well, well the offensive line not giving him a lot of help. Not a lot of help, but the bottom line, he's got to take care of the football. Point after now from Catanzaro. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. 
The Jaguars getting set to go. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear them, <laughs> the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant, you've got to hold on to the football or else we have no hope. Yeah, it's easy for me to laugh sitting up here, but you're exactly right. If we were down there, that message would have been received a whole different way. Because turnovers, they've been a big problem for them. Got to take care of the football. Got to hold on to it. now on first down. They'll set up the screen to Fournette. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a full eight yards. And it sets them back for second down. You know the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? Bet you're going to tell me. Good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. The first is good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen and then you do your blocking how about the read though by the defensive guys they weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the lineman to where the play was and smothered it for a loss of yardage on second down here's Bortles And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Jalen Strong, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Another dangerous throw there, partner. I mean, he's already thrown two interceptions here in the first half. I don't know if you want to keep throwing up 50-50 balls and you've had that kind of lack of success. Yeah, absolutely. Very well could have been a third interception in half number one. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be a tough third and 18. Now Bortles will give to Yeldon, and he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. Now here's a timeout defensively, defensive timeout called by the Jets. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Here's Brad Nortman now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now it's Curlin. Well, nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Jets take possession. Josh McCown of the Jet offense heading back out there. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Target the tight end, Will Ty. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Watch left, watch left. Tight end to the left, tight end to the left. Hurry up, here we go. Blue, 
Working from the gun, McCown. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? <laughs> no. No, not at all. The Jets on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third down and 12. McCown. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, as he's on to punt for New York. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And the ball backed way up, so thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. here on first down. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Muhammad Wilkerson in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So we've hit halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the home team, the Jets, leading this one. As we send you down to Orlando, where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped. As we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Jets are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Jaguars won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Now following the interception, Forte is going to ship out to the right side, and he'll go in for a score. Following the forced fumble, Forte is going to dart up the middle, and he'll go in for the score. Jets is up now by seven. Jets have the football midway through the second. McCown's going to complete the pass. This goes for a touchdown. The lead now at 11. First and 10, here a throw deep down the field is caught. But a quick three-play drive ends with a score. Jaguars trail now by four. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half.
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this you're is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Second half beginning with a run from Fournette. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Now that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here we go now. Three, 90. Three, the play fake to Ivory. Now Bortles. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target. And it's second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Now a man who began his career as a Saint, this is Chris Ivory. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Jaguars on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and eight. Now Bortles. And he's got it to Hearns. There goes Alan Hearns. Touchdown, Jaguars. Alan Hearns, 60 yards, and the Jaguars have cut it back within a score. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right, because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. And they will line up now for the two-point try. Here we go now. Blue. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? 
I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. So here's the Jets offense now as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They'll try to get the running game going with Forte. And he'll get this one across the 20, but only up to about the 21. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Four yards on the pick up there as it'll leave them with a third and about four more for first. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The Jets on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and four. McCown going to throw. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. <laughs> Spinning past him. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. here and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved offense. so that'll back him up five Still first down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. 
He's dead now. They're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now Leonard Fournette. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave him with a third and 11. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. Now he'll go deep down the middle. He's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. Well, your QB's been sacked four times in the game already. And they're the holding goal. And you know darn well the offensive line coach is frustrated and upset that he's been hit that many times already. He doesn't really care that they hold now. Just don't let him get hit anymore. The Jaguars on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This will be third and forever. They fake the handoff. Now Bortles. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Here's Brad Nordman now, standing just outside his own goal line. Here's Curly. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Our eyes shift to the defense of the Jaguars now. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of, great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. scrimmage and taken down no gain on the play there second down but well, it was stopped on that play but he's had plenty of carries all afternoon every now and then the defense is going to win one but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game 10 yards still left on second down they'll run it now out of the gun Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack, and on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. The Jets on third down, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 10. Set. Green, 39. To throw, it's McCown. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. <laughs> and he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. 14 yards is the pickup there at a jet first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup.
Now a run with Forte. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On second down, Forte. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. To throw is McCown. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be fourth down. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And now out come the Jags. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. Well, how many times do we say in this game is speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice gain. So it'll be first down here after the run. Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. So from the 40 to the 45, five-yard run. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. This is Fournette. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Just a couple on the pick up there, and now it's third down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Bortles going to try and throw on third down. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Nine yards on the play and a first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Go, 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 go. Three, 90. Three, 90. 
Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Leonard Williams coming hard that time. He's able to run him down for a loss of 12. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Final minute now of the third quarter. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 41. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. All right, partner, let's go back over the last couple of plays. Sack, loss of yards on a running play. Not exactly the sequence that an offensive coordinator gets comfortable with when calling plays. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. they come to the line they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter we'll return with more after this break you're watching the nfl on ea sports back now here on ea sports it's jaguar football but a little work to do for them they trail here as we start the fourth Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. From the gun, it's Bortles. He's going to walk one deep left side here. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Here's Brad Nortman now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. set to take the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. The drive begins with a run by Forte, and he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take care of the ball and try to move forward. Able to bust through the tackle, but not much to show for it. Still inside the five. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Now a run. This is Bilal Powell. 
And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. That'll be good for six, but now it's fourth down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. You'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. Taking it about the 36. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Jags will have great field position to start this drive as they take over on the short side of the field. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Bortles now on first down. And he floated one out there incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. again here on second and ten and the hit jarred it loose it's incomplete it's a lot of contact going on there and in the end unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body everything looked pretty good until the finish the Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A big gain of 31 on third down. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. On first and ten, here's Bortles. And that is incomplete. The veteran tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. Bortles will try again on second down. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. On play action, it's Bortles. And he'll be out of bounds all the way down at the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as 
I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. And now the offense operates in the red zone. First and goal from the five. Now Fournette. And he gets halfway home from the four down to the two-yard line. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. From the three-yard line again, they'll try and punch it in here on third and goal. Here's Fournette. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Brandon, it's easy to make decisions from right up here where we are, right in the cheap seats, but let's be frank about this one. This isn't even a decision as far as I'm concerned. They have to go for it here. Field goal does you almost no good as time's running out in the game. If you want to win, you have to be aggressive here. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. Now Bortles got to have this one. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Fourth and goal, and they found a way to throw it in the end zone for a touchdown. And these defenses, they just like three downs, get off the field. But here they had to go four, couldn't get it done. A lot of the time, you're looking up and saying, okay, if I hold them for three, at worst, I give up a field goal attempt. When they go for it, sometimes it really affects the defense because maybe they're not mentally prepared to go that fourth down. So here we go now as the Jaguars will go for two. He's going to try and run. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. Well, that decision to me was all about pulling up the chart. You know, that, that beautiful chart that tells you when to go for two, when you to go for chart. one. I do love it. It helps you with your decision making during heated times. And just look at it right here in this part, point of the game. Go for two. Try making a field goal difference. But now just up one makes the rest of this fourth quarter a little more interesting. Yeah, they followed the chart. They just didn't get the two points on the board, did they? Nope. Here's Myers now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So out now come the Jets. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They fake the give to Forte. Now McCown. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. But if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game.
So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. On the draw, McCown leaves it to Forte. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. He already has two sacks to his credit, now another tackle for loss. And you know how you can always identify who was supposed to block him? They're the ones helping up the person who just got knocked to the ground with the ball, right? Whether it's a running play or a pass play, They've got to figure out a way to slow him down. Maybe you chip him with a second guy. Maybe you just out and out double him. Maybe you make sure you take the ball and throw it as far away from him as possible. Because right now, he is wrecking things for them. The grab made by Curse over the middle. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going up route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Now Edwards to kick as he sends it away. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. some clock for Fournette. And not a whole lot to speak of there, so bring him down shy of the 20. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Holding offense. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. Again, it's Fournette, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here? And what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. And they're going to have this one up near the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 20 in picking up the first. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll try and burn some clock now with Ivory. 
Chris Ivory off to the races. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Jaguars. Chris Ivory, 71 yards. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. Well called, well blocked, and then he just made a great play. That was an athlete going a long way. Yeah, how about the suddenness, too, of just getting there and taking off and going for the defensive guys? Plays like that really hurt. Now Myers for the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. So that drive, four plays. And it's culminated by Chris Ivory taking it into the end zone. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays for one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. First is McCown. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. McCown will try again on second down. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. McCown giving to Powell on the draw. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity.
They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, four quarters, hours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner, and there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. On third down, Fournette. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. Watch the curl, watch the curl, watch the curl. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. This is Ivory. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. in a good spot here, second and two. Bortles on the give to Fournette. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. over we'll step aside and now following that timeout the defense back out onto the field
Here's Brad Nordman now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Luke McCown and the offense heading out for their next possession. And the passing game, I mean, look at the numbers. It's fallen off. When, when a team is struggling, sometimes you look at the quarterback. When the quarterback starts to struggle, who goes over and picks him up? Yeah, that's always a big one, isn't it? Usually, there's a quarterback whisperer somewhere. And what I mean by that is, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's one of his best friends on the team, someone that can get in his ear, Get with him and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So there's one person he can lean on. He's going to have to lean on that guy right now. Back to throw. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. down there 19 yards to pick up there he'll look to throw got a man it's the rookie Ardarius Stewart and he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39 10 yards is the pickup good enough for a jet first down back to throw and he hits his running back Matt Forte and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And at 50 seconds left, he'll spike it to stop the clock. the pick up and that'll lead to a third down they'll get to the line here but remember it's also third down to throw is McCown and incomplete here on third down that would have been a tough catch but in this two minute drill those are the ones you really hope your guys come up with yeah you don't want your guy to be able to take the out because it was a tough catch you needed him to come up with that one because if he does it alters the perspective of this two minute drill doesn't it one score down here we go they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Let's go. Three, let's go. Now McCown got to have this one. And he comes back with one complete. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. All-star offense. And that'll set them back five. Still first down. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Here we go now. 
McCown to throw. And this is caught at the eight. 23 yards on the play. Five seconds, four seconds. One final try for McCown. This will be caught just inside the 10. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. Well, no doubt an electrifying finish to have it down inside the 10-yard line. That final shot, though, they couldn't get it in the end zone. And that's all she wrote. And they had the final shot. The last snap taken that close to the end zone. They don't get it in, so they'll regret that. But flip it over, making a stand in that portion of the field, congratulations to them. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long, everybody.